Welcome back to Wreck Roulette. And we have one of our favorite maps. And we have Sakatra. And again, we have Persians. As Churro says, good luck, have fun. U2 says corn dogs. Sakatra, Persians versus Bohemians. And this is an interesting Sakatra generation. Look at this mountain right in the middle. There's all flat land around it, and it's just this mountain. And Churros has actually managed to get the downhill hit on the elephant, which is really great. And he, the elephant only hit him once, too. So he got away with hitting it twice, and the elephant only got one hit in return. So Churros is a dirty lamer here with Bohemians. He's not going to be able to bring this elephant in. Oh, my God. That's what you get, lamer. That's what you get, lamer. And Corn Dogs is on the case now. And Churros is leaving. Oh no, Churros! Churros might have thrown. Churros might have thrown. Corn Dogs is still trying to block this. All he needs to do is block or get the elephant to hit the scout one more time. That scout is super weak, and Churros is going to get back to his TC. Really, really impressive stuff. Only six seconds of idle TC time with all that laming, too. Super, super impressive for that elephant to go back three times and he still brings it in. Really nice, but we don't we don't appreciate lamers. And we hope that Corn Dogs comes forward now and lames the hell out of him. Corn Dogs is playing as Persians. So maybe Churros was worried about, you know, the thing. As my man is sending Oh no. He's sending five to wood, guys. It's happening. It's happening for the second time today, I think. Trying to block this elephant. That's never going to happen, though, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's never going to happen. You can't block that close to your TC. Really tough for for uh, Corn Dogs to find a place to put the TC, though. With the house there, you can't fit it in here. You can't put it there because there's a hill. You might be able to come around this way. As we see, Churros now go for a house there. Interesting. Isn't laming mandatory in Scotchford? Nope. But if they lame you, you better go back and lame them. Wait, this is 1100, 1200? Uh, you think an 1100 or 1200 could bring that elephant back three times? You have a way overinflated opinion of 11 and 1200s. They would have lost three scouts trying to bring that in. There is 32 seconds of idle TC time, but remember, you had to deal with the blockage over here, too. I would say this is 1400, if I were to guess. 1450, maybe. As we see Blue now come out this way. Is Blue going to mill this and go for all of these? What's he doing? Ah, he's sending all the... Okay, it's a lame. Or it's a douche. 100%. That mill from Churros, I don't know, getting a little bit, getting a little bit greedy when you know your opponent is Persians and you might suspect that there's a lame coming anyway and that TC is going to be plopped down over here. Good scouting there from Corn Dogs to know that the TC was going over in this location. Unfortunately for him, Churros is going to be standing over the TC foundation and yeah. Let's see Churros' response. He's going to contest this. Well... There's not too many villagers, so it might actually work here. It's very rare that you can actually deny the TC foundation with Vils, though. It's very, very rare. These douchers, they're used to this. You know, they've had tons of people try everything to try and stop it. And villagers is pretty, pretty difficult to actually deny with. As we see all the economy from Churros running around except these three villagers trying to kill all the villas, but the TC is at 90%. The TC is going to go up. The TC is going to go up and now he has to run away. This was super bad. This was super bad for Churros. And Churros is housed. Churros is housed. Is he coming forward here? He's just going to send his <laughs> He's going to send his entire eco forward. Run with the goats, my dude. Run with the goats. Delete the mill. You need the wood. 
He's running with the goats over here and he's gonna trap himself into this little area back here. Still enough wood and stone to kill the next TC that Churros makes. Right now it looks like corn dogs are the superior circus food. It does look like it, doesn't it? As we see the villagers still chopping over here. Is Churros? Corn dogs doesn't have his scout alive, right? So corn dogs can't tell where Churros is, but it's a very small map. There's only so many places he could go. Not many places to run to. How can you have two L's and no food? Um, Because he spent it on villagers? It's only 800 food. And he like kind of got pushed off his zebra and he didn't take his berries, right? Lots of vital TC time now for corn dogs. As he's still working away on this town center from Churros. Churros still producing vills though and this vill should get out in time. We look at the vill difference now, 24 to 18. Eco KD is one to one currently. As Corndog now escapes to go search for his opponent. And Churros, oh, oh wow. What a good spot for a TC. I did not even think about that on the hill. There's nowhere, I think this is the only place that Corndogs could put a, a TC to kill that. That is so nice, that generation. Oh wow. That is amazing. So fortunate that it, the map is like this. Also, a great call out from um, Churros to realize that. And he goes for... Pa I love this. Really, really good. Now, corn dogs can take this down. So you might want like three or four more Palisades here rather than just one. He can kill that as we see corn dogs now coming in here with villagers and he's gonna discover the town center because he was going out for the berries and i think he's gonna realize that there's nothing he can do about this unless he kills this palisade that's the only way what a great spot oh my god what a fantastic spot for a tc the gods smile upon this man as Corn Dogs comes out here. Please, Churros. Please, for the love of God, put more. Yes. Okay, this tells me it's probably 1450 to 1600. The ratings here. Kills that just in case. Another Palisade here. Another one here. House here. Good. Palisade here. Just keep putting those foundations down, my dude. Fantastic. And Blue is now going to have to go for a TC over here. But Churros realizes that. And he puts foundations over here. Great. That's amazing. Really, really good um, counterplay to the Persian douche. One right here. One right here. Please, 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 please. Yes. That's really great. Donkey for world domination. Thank you for the two months. Appreciate it. And we see corn dogs now. He's going to try and put his TC here. Will that range? If he puts his TC, he's walling this off so he can kill these walls and then put the TC here. It might range from the bottom of the hill, maybe? No, I don't think so, right? I don't think it will. Feudal Age is on the way. And they're just peacefully coexisting here, I suppose. It's a race to see who can forage faster. And our Bohemian player... Is going to be able to maybe drop a market and go up to Castle Age. I don't think there's much you can do in Feudal Age here. Maybe like a tower. To, even a tower wouldn't accomplish anything. I think your objective should probably just be to go up to Castle Age. Get some Monk Siege on the field or get a castle. You have the stone right here. I'm going to go for an Archer Range. Okay. Wouldn't uphill advantage make a big difference? I don't think it does because it's only if you think about the armor and the actual attack power, you're not getting much from that percentage, right? 
Like the extra arrows are counting as extra arrows. They're not adding extra damage. There's a tower there from Churros. I think the tower is unnecessary. I uh, also think the archer range is probably unnecessary, but he might be able to find some value like over here as he comes over with the mill. Okay, he's going to be able to find value with those archers. But he probably could have, if he didn't get, make the tower, didn't make the range, didn't queue up the archers, he probably could have been up by now with a market. <laughs> yeah, fuck you. Fuck you too. <laughs> that was literally 11 villagers going for that zebra. They were relying on that meat. And the archers are going to find the villagers here. Feudal Age on the way for our Persians player. Churros running into the TC. Trying to micro down that villager. Yeah. And blue is walled in the vill. And red just calmly leaves. And comes back. Okay. Dude, I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like this. You you need to realize your win condition. It's getting the castle age first. Wasting resources on the towers. But I mean it's a crazy game, right? Absolutely crazy game. It's hard to keep like we we obviously have the vision over everything. Um, but it's hard to keep your head in the right place in a game like this. And that tower is better. That tower is better because it cuts off some of the farms. It's still a little bit too far back in my opinion. But he's nervous, clearly, about corn dogs rushing it down. And corn dogs is now going for extra villagers there. As he rushes out here. My problem with this is like you have an unassailable position up here. You have golds under your control, completely unassailable position for blue to really hit any of your res. And you're leaving that position. And you're staying in Feudal Age. Unassailable? Yep. Means you can't assail it. Archer's coming over though. And blue is coming out here with villagers. Eco Katie is now 5 to 4 in favor of corn dogs. Well, 5 5 now. Very, very even. And red is about to lose another villager here, maybe? Yep, there goes another one. And a third one. TC's can't hit shots, but she's dead. And he's dead. And you're putting yourself at risk by coming at like, oh my god. It makes for entertaining gameplay, for sure. It makes for entertaining gameplay. But my man could have been in castle three minutes ago. With siege and monks and everything. Or even a castle. You buy your way up to castle age, and then you buy a castle. And then he can't do anything against you. Okay, villager count 29 for corn dogs, 23 for churros. Corn dogs now getting fletching. Churros still without fletching. Still hasn't hit the wood line here. Always when you're getting douched, remember, even if it looks like all their eco is forward, they likely have something in the back, so you can go hit that. And archers coming around this side, still no fletching, so they're gonna have problems killing all these vills. Almost within range of that TC as well, but he's gonna find some value. That's nice. That's really, really good. There is the market. There it is. Love to see it in the Oh, the archers back here could be brutal if he just sits them here. Gonna try and find the vills, but it's so hard to kill without fletching. It's so difficult to kill without fletching. It's so difficult to keep your head in the game and pay attention to your military. And he's going to lose a lot of archers against that TC. Here's the market as well. Mad Martini, thank you for the tier 1 for 12 months. That's one year. I guess it has been a year. It's kind of nuts. And he finds the zebra out on this side. Really nice uh, pickup there from Churros. 
28 bills versus 24. Two Halloweens ago. Shut the fuck up or I'll take it to Twitter. I refuse to watch another ad. Citizen Bane, thank you for the 10 months. Twitch Turbo, my friend. Twitch Turbo is really good. I shouldn't say that to you as a streamer that wants your sub, but it's really good. I have it. All right, Fletching. He's spending the food on Fletching. Still not going up. And now he doesn't really have the, even the gold to think about buying his way up. He's adding another archer range. As he has villagers on food over here, so the food income is going to be okay, I guess. Goes out to the stone now. And blue is basically trapped in on this side. Blue is getting a lot of farms, though. He's got 12 farms now. Trying to kill this villager over here. He's kind of got the towers protecting him a little bit. Still wondering what to do with these vills. And Churros is going to find the wood line at the back. He's going to see this. So he can send the archers over in that direction. Man, I love how, like, the position is completely flipped, right? Like, red started over here, blue started over here, but now red is just on this mountain in the middle, and blue is, uh, blue is over where red's TC was. Great stuff. And corn dogs might go up to Castle H first. He's got a lot of gold in the bank. He's got the food building up because of the farms. More archers being queued here from churros. What are you are these guys? We don't know. I'm guessing around 1,400. Um, it always looks worse when you have a game like this with a Persian douche because things get crazy, right? And people get into situations they're not used to. And the elo in general always looks lower when you're watching a wreck than it actually is. This looks much more like 1100 to me, to be honest. Strode, remember the beginning of the game with the elephant thing? The elephant went back three times and he still managed to get it back to his TC. And on the first elephant hit, the elephant only got one attack against him, which is really good timing to pull away. Yep. Here come the archers. And there's the market from Blue. Thought he would add that market earlier. And he actually escaped with the villagers. He escaped on the backside here. He should have had that market a very long time ago to buy his way up. So we see villagers still kind of chilling underneath the TC looking for a job to do. More vills over here, and Churros is hunting those down. Villager count now 34 to 35. Once the market goes up, so will Blue. It's only four on food and three on gold for uh, Churros. And Blue is going to click up to Castle Age. I'm still convinced that Castle Age was the win condition here for our Bohemians player. I don't like the Archer play, and I certainly don't like the Towers coming forward and putting your vills at risk, but he's looking for the vills right here. He's still picking away with the archers and he's going to find a couple more. Oh my God. Man got sauced over here. He got walled in. Okay. What's it going to be for blue? It's going to be knights. Okay, lots on gold here for red. Still not on the way to Castle Age. He's got 40 villagers. Eight more than blue. Uh, second stable being added back here for blue. He does have a decent farm eco. He's got a lot of gold. Going for a house wall here. Needs another house wall here to prevent these archers from coming in. Red will st see the stable happening. And he manages to kill the villain. The stable is at 97%. So bloodlines can't come in yet. Because the stable is not complete. He's only 20 seconds away. And there's Castle Age. There is Castle Age for red. And if he ever gets a castle, oh, it's going to be so tough for blue. 
it's going to be so tough for blue if he ever gets a castle. And he does have enough on gold to buy himself the stone, even if he runs out of stone here. He's already run out of stone back over here. There's Castle H right there, and knights are on the way. Does Red not know about staying ground for archers? It's difficult, right, in a game like this. And a lot of people don't like using staying ground for whatever reason. I guess they've had too many experiences of going back to their army and it's all dead. And they never realized what was happening. Second armor upgrade. Really like that from Blue. This needs a lot of knights. If Red goes for a castle here, there is an opportunity for Blue to just dive in with the knights and kill all the vills. But Red is now wisely out of Spearman. So he's been thinking about that castle for a very long time. And he still has the archer mass. Will be difficult for Blue to do anything about that. And now Red is going to see the Knights with the plus two. It's too many archers to fight, really, for Blue. So he's going to pick away at the edges, look for Vils. And if he gets back here, it could be really good. That's a lot of villagers. That's eight villagers back there. But he has to be worried about the castle. I think that's the main concern. Can Red put it here? Yes, he can. And here come the Knights. But the Spearmen are there, and they're Bohemian Spearmen. And not going to be enough knights. Yep, the knights will just die, and the castle's going to go up. And I think that can range the town center, especially with Fletching. It's a Persian TC, but still, there's all this Farmiko under threat as the knights have found the wood line. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Damage on both sides. I think it's better, way better map position, though, for Churros. He's now controlling the golds in the center here. He's got this castle doing work against the town center. Please ungarrison your villagers and put your archers in there or something. Please actually have them working. A sight wagon now out. Please ungarrison your villagers, my dude. Please ungarrison your villagers. That's 14 villagers inside that castle. Not good. But he is clearing up the knights behind. And he's going to get these vills back to work. And he young garrisons these ones. Nice. Love to see it. Where does blue go from here? He's going to tower over here and secure this res. Where does blue go? Where does he go? He's got four knights only. His TC is under fire. His farm eco is, uh, is threatened as well. His gold is kind of being cut off. Okay, Churros. What do you do as well? I'd love to see Churros maybe go... Monk Siege now, I think would be good. He could basically do anything as long as he has Siege because of this crossbow mass. They'll deal with the with the Knights. Especially if he gets chemistry. That'd be great. Oh, Bodkin. He didn't even have that. Interesting. Interesting decision making going after the tower with crossbows. Okay. Guess he really believes in the Sussite Wagon. <laughs> <laughs> but it's firing a cannon. Still no eco upgrades except the automatic uh, gold and stone upgrades that he got as Bohemians. Still nothing. And Corndog says GG well played. He only had wheelbarrow and he realizes there's nothing to do. What a fantastic um, position there in the middle. And he great heads up play from churros to put the tc in the middle there and then to put all of these palisade walls that's what won him the game honestly he was so far ahead at that point even delaying castle age and going archers and losing the villagers coming forward to tower his opponent still worked out for him he, he just got himself so far ahead Eleven fifty, says Strode. okay 1300 ish. 1600 to 1700. 1350, 1050. All right. Once again, Elo is all over the board. 
KD in favor of corn dogs. A lot of that coming from his TC and his towers on the archers and villagers of red. Eco in favor of churros. Castle age timings, very similar. Villager max in favor of red and EAPM 62 to 37. Interesting. I'm still going to stick with the 1350 to 1450. That's where I think we're lying right now. Yeah, I think that's where we're where I'm convinced. We shift over here. Return to map. Vascarius, Vascarius Omegalo. <laughs> What rating is Vuscarius? 1400. 1400. That's right. And uh, he's against uh, Shafification? Shafification. It was a good douche. It was a really good opening. It's just unfortunate for him that <laughs> this was happening. Yo, Slammer, thank you for the raid, dude. Thank you. Hope you had a good stream. And I wish you well on the uh, Empire Wars stuff this coming weekend. I know you've been practicing a lot. I really did, Slam, if you're still here, I enjoyed your game on the bull with Byzantines. I thought that was a really good strategy. I think if you go back and watch, I don't know if you saw it, but Daniel's game as well with Koreans it was kind of nuts, too. It was very similar. How was blue score so high? Well, he explored a lot. He killed a lot as well. So. All right. If you guys saw this on YouTube, thanks for watching. You want to upload your recs for rec roulette. Um, you can do so via my Discord. The link below the video. And thank you. See you guys again soon.